Today's video is understanding 4-in-1 modules, ELRS modules, and choosing the configuration for your TX16S. So let's get started. Talking about 4-in-1 and ELRS modules, there's a few things you want to consider when selecting one or the other. First is what receivers do you have now? Second, what receivers do you plan on in the future? Third is what options do you plan on having available such as Buddy Box or Wireless Trainer? First, let's talk about the differences in a 4-in-1 module and ELRS. 4-in-1 module is going to allow you to connect to other brand of receivers such as Spectrum, Lemon, Orange, FreeSky, FlySky, Futaba, and many others. So this allows you, if you have receivers now, to connect to those and fly your airplanes without having to swap them out. Also, if you get a pre-owned airplane that's got a receiver included, you'll be good to go there because you'll be able typically to bind to that type of receiver. ELRS advantage is longest range, lowest latency, and aggressively priced receivers. So that's going to give you the best connection option across the board. Talking about the difference in the two, you're probably thinking, well, BD, how do I know which one I want? So let's go over that a little bit more in depth. When we talk about that with a TX16S, there is two options that you can do internally, the 4-in-1 or ELRS. If you're coming from a different brand or there's a type of receivers that you prefer, then you would probably want to go with the 4-in-1 module because that's going to give you the most flexibility. Now. If you go with the 4-in-1 module internally or externally, there's not really a benefit as far as connectivity or range because the power output is going to be the same, 100 milliwatts, whether you're using it internally or externally. And this is where ELRS shines because you can run up to one watt of power, check your local regulations on if that's legal to do in your area, and you can change the packet rate, which is essentially, do you want lower latency or better signal? Most people are going to prefer better signal because you may not be able to tell the difference in the latency. However, the reason why I bring this up and talking about the powers is because power output is one variable of range and signal. As I mentioned, the 4-in-1 is limited to 100 milliwatts the ELRS can go up to one watt of power. However, I mentioned that the four and one is 100 milliwatts either way. The one watt or thousand milliwatt of power output, which is 10 times the four and one module, that's only if you run an external capable module. When you run ELRS built into the radio, you can only go up to 250 milliwatts of power. Now, where you think, well, BD, that, that don't really mean nothing to me. I don't know anything about the power outputs. Well, in most line of sight situations, 25 milliwatts is about all you need. Now, if you fly way out or you have a big airplane, then it might bump up to 50 milliwatts. So the power rating is going to be fine for either one. So you're probably thinking, well, why would I not just go with four and one and have the flexibility versus ELRS? ELRS two advantages of having that kind of range one is if you're flying fpv or drones and you're not going to be flying line of sight whether you're flying around obstacles or range whatever then you need that extra power to get that type of range second is if you're capable of going two to four times the distance because of the power output then you're going to have better range and connectivity when you're flying it in closer. For example, let's say the four and one can go one mile and the external module ELRS can go 10 miles. Well, if you're flying a half a mile, a half a mile is a lot closer to a mile than it is 10 miles. So something just to keep in mind. However, they both will function great, typically at line of sight. Last option to consider is setting up wireless trainer. TX16S has one module internal and that allows to send or receive. 
setting up a wireless trainer, this is going to receive with that module. However, you need something to output to the aircraft. You can use DSM or FreeSky protocols to connect to the TX16S. And then when you go to the aircraft, that's going to fall into the same rules as earlier. If it's a legacy receiver, you'll get the 4 in 1 module. If you have an ELRS receiver, you'll get the ELRS module. So just think of it as the radio can connect in, and then depending on the receiver in the aircraft, you're going to go with the 4 in 1 or the ELRS. Now we've covered the different configuration and options of internal and external 4 in 1 or ELRS. If you have any questions, just feel free to comment down below. If you learned something new or found this video informative, go ahead and push like. If you want to see future TX16S tutorials and equipment, go ahead and subscribe to the channel while you're here. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you on the next one.